Hi everybody, this is Gardy Raymond from ConsequenceVideoDesigns.com and today I'm going to show you how to remove this name from the back of the boat using After Effects and Mocha. I'm going to be using Mocha Pro because I have it installed on my machine but if you have After Effects CS5 or later you're going to have Mocha for AE and all the steps are going to be the same. So uh, let's just dive right in. So you can see we have this shot here of the Lucky Witch out of Cape Elizabeth, Maine from a shoot I did recently. And after we did the shoot, it turned out that the client didn't like the name Lucky Witch on the back of the boat, so we had to get rid of it. So what we're going to do here is find a good frame that shows the whole name here, and this seems like a good one. And the very first thing we're going to do is we need to export a still image so we can bring it into Photoshop create essentially a clean plate and then we're going to use Mocha to track the motion of the shot and then apply that tracking data to the clean plate and it'll get rid of the words Lucky Witch on the back. So decided this is a good frame here and you could export a still image using QuickTime or you could use Premiere or Final Cut or whatever your editing program is. I'm going to take it out of, out of After Effects right here. We're going to set an in and an out point at, at this frame. I'm going to press B to set my work area in point and N to set my work area out point. So you just have one frame here. We're going to go to composition, add to render queue, where we can do command M, which I like to use. We'll go to output mode, TIFF sequence, and even though it says TIFF sequence, even though we only have one frame uh, set in our timeline, it's only going to export one TIFF image. Uh, if we needed alpha, we could export it with alpha, but we don't. RGB is fine. OK. Going to set the place to export it to. I'm going to go to my documents, my tutorials folder. And I've actually already exported a still here from earlier, but I'll export another one here. Save it. And now we're good to go. So we got to render that real quick. Now it's done. Now let's go to Photoshop. Now let's open it up. The one that was in there was the one I did before. So most recently modified is this one. Let's open it up. All right, so here we go with the still image in Photoshop. Let's double click on the, back, on the background layer to unlock it. Just click OK. We're good to go. Now, you could clone onto a different layer, but I'm just going to clone straight onto this layer. So we have the layer selected. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Holding the space bar down to get the hand and clicking and dragging, if you're not sure. Now I'm going to press S to get to the clone tool. Uh, let's right click to check our settings. And I usually like my hardness around the middle. It depends on what you're doing. Uh, size should be about fine. Click out of that clicked once, haven't defined a source point, so let's define a source point here. Hold down the option key to get this little target here. Click once to sample, and now you can kind of see where you're going to write here, where you're going to draw over with the sampled portion. So let's just start cloning out the word which here. Now you'll know you've gone far enough when you start to see the top of the letters. See here, the top of letters start to show up again. So you can stop there, resample, come back down, and then finish this up. Watch out for this little reflection on the boat here and want to keep that on. up a little bit more. It's easy as that. Go over this side's a little bit more difficult because of the angle, but it's still not so bad. Let's press the open bracket key. Is a good shortcut to change the size. Option click again. Let's sample the edge of the boat. If you're going around the edge of something, I find it's really easy or the best way to do it is to when you sample, try to get your crosshairs right on the edge of that of that hard line. So we'll sample the edge there and then when you drag it back down the preview here 
will let you line up the edge of the the edge of the boat or whatever it is you're cloning almost exactly so then you drag down a little bit and we see the top of the L starting to come in again so we won't go any farther let's sample it again come back down a little farther again There we go. We'll go over this way. Let's clone this out a little bit. So we'll finish up the clone here. Sample the edge again. I always think the edge is a good place to start because you can just line up and you know you're getting the same things. Clone back in here and we start to get letters back in. So let's sample it again. Da 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 da. There we go. Now, clean out along this edge here. Let's hit L to switch over to the lasso tool. I have the polygonal, polygonal, sorry, I sound stupid, uh, lasso tool. Uh, if you want to cycle through them, you can press Shift L and it'll cycle through to the magnetic lasso, the regular lasso, or this one. So we use this one, and what we'll do is select just the area that we want to clone out. Close that, and uh, actually we're going to deselect that because I have a feather set up here. Let's change the feather back down to zero. Um, change to one. One pixel is usually pretty good. Here, here, here. Double click to close it. Back to the clone tool. Sample here. And now when you click in here, even though the preview shows up over this this uh, ladder here that we don't want to clone out, because we have it, the area selected, it's not going to clone over that so you get a nice clean edge there and you don't have to worry about getting into that now command D to deselect back to lasso let's do the same thing on the other side here and the color on this side is a lot similar to this so I'm going to sample this area rather than on this side of the ladder so sample that and now you see when you're cloning two, you get this X. See the X to the right of the circle there that's moving up and down? That's showing you the area that it's cloning from. So you see as you get closer to the shadow, we get closer to the shadow here, and then as the X hits the shadow, the shadow starts getting cloned in. All right, so that's not what we want. So you gotta pay attention to that. So we'll Command Z to undo. Let's sample from here again. Let's clone out a little bit until we get to the shadow. Stop, resample again, come back down clone out some more. Almost. We're going to get a little bit of shadow in there, so let's resample one more time. There we go. Command D to deselect, and it's looking pretty good. Now, it doesn't look perfect. Let's right click, change my hardness down a little bit, and clean this up a little bit on the left. And I'll undo that, and just kind of clean this up a little bit. So it looks a little bit better. We could even, if we want to, Use the blur tool real quick and just give it a quick once over here and kind of smooth everything out. All right, so now the cloning is done. Let's open this back, open up the original again. Oops, uh, we're gonna save this. Sorry, let's save as Lucky Witch. clean. Tiff layer is fine. Layers is fine. Good to go. Okay. Don't need to save transparency. Could have saved it as a JPEG, uh, PNG, any of that will work fine. So now, just to compare, let's open up the original. Oops. Quick, get that off of here. Select all of it. Copy it. Go back to our original document and paste it in here. So now, you see what we did. We just got rid of Lucky Witch. Okay, let's drag it out of the trash. This is already saved. We're good to go. So, now that we have a clean plate, let's go back to After Effects. And let's import our still. Lucky Witch still with the clean back. Okay, so we have the clean here. 
So now we take this, turn off the audio because we don't need the audio. Uh, let's expand our work area all the way back out. Now with this selected, we go to Animation, Track, and Mocha AE. Now on my computer, this is going to launch Mocha Pro because, like I said, that's what I have installed. But if you select uh, Track and Mocha AE, Mocha AE will launch. And here we go. All right. So you want to check the frame range, 0 to 105, which is what we have in After Effects. Frame 0, all the way up to 105, as you can see over here. Uh, 24 frames a second, HD. You want to go to Advanced here and check this Cache Clip button, because what this does is, once we hit OK, You'll see up here on the right, caching your original clip. And what this does is it allows the clip to play back in real time in Mocha. Uh, so let's zoom out a little bit. The controls are a little bit different in Mocha, but not too terribly. Uh, instead of pressing Z to switch to a, the zoom tool right here, you could select the zoom tool if you want and click and drag in and out. Or if you quickly want to do it, press and hold the Z key, drag in and out. Same thing there. X is the hand tool rather than the space bar. If you hit space bar, it's going to play through. So, what we want to do here is track the back of the boat. The, the, you want to track the portion that you're going to replace. So, get the X spline tool, and we'll draw a loose spline around which because that's what we want to replace. Um, let's rename this. When you're in Mocha, if you're doing one layer at a time, it's fine, but once you start getting into tracking four, five, six, dozens of layers at a time, you really need to make sure they're labeled properly. So which track? And just for the sake of it, let's track Lucky by itself. And you want to make sure you get, you can actually go a little bit outside what you're tracking because Mocha kind of needs that extra data outside of what you're tracking to understand where it is. Oh, sorry, and what I just did here too is, let me uh, right click, uh, delete this layer. Um, x line here, left click, normal click, around to set your edges, and once you get your last one, to close it, you right click. And it doesn't set that last point. So there you go. Now this is lucky track. Now the reason for making sure all your, la your layers are labeled properly is if you have a layer passing in front of another layer, uh, say a, a ball passing in front of a window, uh, and you're tracking the ball and the window, you want you would want the most foreground layer at the top and the most background layer at the bottom with all the corresponding in between layers in the right order going from closest to the camera to farthest away from the camera. So now that we have these two tracks we go down here to the track motion tab and with this shot uh, there's a little bit of shear so for a basic track that's just a, uh, for a shot that's just a pan, tilt, zoom track, or pan, tilt, zoom shot, sorry, um, the translation scale and rotation tracking is pretty much all you need. But as things start to turn in perspective, you can see, if you look at the boat, you can see how the boat kind of shifts away here. So it's changing its perspective. So when something changes perspective, you want to make sure you have shear tracked at the very least. Um, and perspective as well. So now that's checked. Now we'll go to lucky track. Check perspective on that one too. Um, if these gear icons on your layers are checked, that means the layer is going to get tracked. If you've already tracked a layer and you need to do a track of a different layer and you don't want to mess up your original track, uncheck that. Uh, if you leave this checked, it will overwrite all the data every time you do a track but it can also track multiple layers at a time like you can see now. So, select them and let's
track forward. And this should go pretty quick. All right, now the track's done. We can scrub through this real quick. Now, if you look at the witch track, this one, as we scroll through, you can actually hit play, and it'll play forwards and backwards for you. Um, see how the square stays almost exactly where it needs to be, no matter the shape of the or the perspective of the boat or anything else. That's what you want. Now, if you look at this lucky track, see how it gets kind of wonky around the corner here. It shifts a little bit more than it should, I think. Um, and in this particular instance, it's not going to cause many problems for us. But if you're trying to do uh, very exact rotoscoping, this extra motion here isn't going to be perfect for you. So you're probably going to want to retrack that. So we select a witch track. We go to export tracking data. We want to select after effects transform data. Uh, if you're using Mocha for AE, you're only going to have transform data and corner pin data. Uh, Obviously, with Mocha Pro, you have a lot more other options. So, After Effects Transform Data, you can save it to a text file and import it, but the easiest thing to do if you're working on a project, like chances are you will be just jumping back and forth, you can just copy to the clipboard. Now let's switch back over to After Effects. Let's create a new null object, and to do that, I'm going to press Command, Option, Shift, Y. And also do Layer, New, Null Object. I'm a big fan of using shortcuts as, as often as possible. So you go to the head of the piece here. In reality, you want to go to whatever frame it is that you started tracking on. So back in Mocha, if we actually set this track up to start on, here's your frame counter here. First frame, last frame, and here's the current frame that you're on. You can see actually in Mocha, if you just hover over things, there's little pop-ups. It'll tell you where it is. So if we decided to start tracking on frame 18, say we would have gone like that, gone like that, started my endpoint at layer eight, at uh, frame 18 for this. Then we'd go back to After Effects and we'd paste the data starting on frame 18. However, we start on frame zero. So let's put our playhead at frame zero, make sure null is selected and just press command V to paste all our tracking data. You can see all this fun tracking data here. Press U. Whoops. Apparently, it, pasted, it copied corner pin data. So let's get rid of all of that. That's not at all what we wanted. Uh, reset. Undo. Now we're back to the end. Oh, let's go back to Mocha. Make sure this is set in here. Which track? Export tracking data again. Apparently, I selected corner pin. I want the transform data. Copy to clipboard. Corner pin is for if you're doing screen replacements or you want to put um, signs or anything that's pretty much a square or rectangle shape. Uh, corner pin will help you with that. There's plenty of other uses for it as well, but right now we just want the transform data. Now we have the transform data. Back to the null. Command V. Paste it. So when you paste transform data, all right, to show all the keyframes first, press U on the keyboard for uber frame, shows all the frames, and you see all the keyframes. And if you have it turned on in your preferences, all your keyframe data, that would be preferences, display, yes, all right, motion path. If you do no motion path, it gets rid of all, this, all the uh, motion path on the display. But I like seeing it, preferences, display, all keyframes, you can also do no more than uh, any number of keyframes that you want. Uh, but we'll keep it on there. The one thing you need to do for this is select the anchor point, click on anchor point so all the keyframes are selected, click on the stopwatch to get rid of it, and then right click, reset. And that'll bring your null object back to where it was tracked. Um, if you're wondering why the null object is exactly where it is there, what Mocha does is when you track it, it selects the center of your tr of your tracking plane. So no matter what the shape is, you know the shape can be you know, 
something really weird like that and it calculates the center of that point and that's where the uh, null object is going to be stuck to. So delete that, go back to After Effects. So now it's there. All right. You can see it follows along very nicely with the motion. Now, what we need to do is go to the frame where we exported our still image. And I forgot where it is, fortunately. After Effects tells you when you exported it. See, nope, nope, nope. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Frame 55. When you export as a TIFF, it automatically puts the frame number at the end. So we know this still that we cleaned up was frame 55. So now we want to go back here. Zoom back in real quick. Go to frame 55. 55. Okay. Now we take the clean plate and stick it in here. So let's draw, since this is a by itself, is this whole frame. And we only want this little bit here. Let's mask out the area that we want to replace. Please excuse the sound effects. There we go. Now hit M to go to mask. I'm going to change my mask color so I can see it a little bit better. All I did was click on this little square here, and you can change it to any mask color you want. Uh, I like pink, it usually stands out pretty well. There we go. Okay. Now let's hit F to get the mask feather up a little bit. Let's do eh, three pixels. All right, so there we go. And now we have this other bit over here we need to get rid of. So let's draw another mask. Here. And one more mask on this side. Let's zoom in pretty close so we can make sure we're on the right spot. There. There. And there. I'll press V if you want to move the mask around a little bit. Zoom out. Oh, and we see there's a little bit right there that we still need to get rid of. So we'll select this mask. Drag it out just a little bit farther. Drag this out just a little bit farther. All right. So there, it's clean, right? All we need to do is take the pick whip and parent the clean plate to the null object. And now, boom. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens here when we get back to the beginning looks okay over here but this little bit slides out it's because this the track of this point is a little bit different than the tracking from this point the back of the boat isn't exactly flat it's curved so this ends up moving a little bit differently than this does so in this case we should have actually gone back and retrack this and gotten this one right meantime let's set our endpoint here and let's do a quick preview and let's just look at this area here all clean can't even tell this over here is still a little dirty as you can obviously see but over on the right hand side we're good to go now something else you might notice back in the beginning As the sunlight changed a little bit, you can now see this part that we masked out. So let's go back here and B, N to set our endpoints. 
remember, we're just looking at this part right here, not this, because this is all messed up. <laughs> so see how the sun changes? So what we're going to do to fix that is we're going to go, in the meantime, let's do this. Let's get rid of these two, since we're going to have to do them independently now. So let's just keep it lucky and get rid of the witch part. So what we're going to do here, first of all, I, this mask is kind of in my way. I want to be able to see this edge because that's where you can really see the difference in the colors. And with this mask in the way, it kind of makes it weird to see or more difficult to see. So you can hide all your layer assistance, everything from masks to the edge of a layer. Let's see if we duplicate this layer and we scale it up. See how it shows you the edge of the frame here? We can hide all that stuff. Yep, there it is. It is that one. Uh, the shortcut for this is Command Shift H. We'll turn everything off, turn it back on, off, on. So if I want to hide that, Command Shift H, get rid of that. And now we'll go to the point right about there where it looks like the colors match. And let's do effect, color correction, levels. Let's set a keyframe there. And then go back to the beginning. See, this is a little bit darker now. So we want to darken it up a little bit. So we'll take our input black. Drag it up a little bit until it just about matches. So you just want to tweak this a little bit until it matches. About right. And the other thing we can do, so see it's lighter down here than it is up there. drag that back and get it as close as we can. We can also set this mask feather, set a keyframe back to where this is, back here, feather this up a little bit. Feather that, and we'll do M a few times, bring up a mask expansion, keyframe there, and we'll drag it back down, mask expansion, bring it back out. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Now when we play through this, let's hit zero on the keypad to do a RAM preview. Now, you can see it changes, the, the brightness level changes as the brightness level changes up here and it matches in very nicely. I still see a little bit, a little work that could have been done with the clone. You kind of see this, this line in here, it kind of gets repeated. Repeating textures are, are a dead giveaway of a clone. So you got to kind of watch out for that too, but for a quick little For a quick little fix, that does the job.